You're listening to Work It Mommy, where the goal is to be the best mom ever and most importantly, stay sane while we do it. So ladies, four toys that every baby, toddler, or even small child should have. So this list of four items is a list that I have thought long and hard about, and I hope that it is helpful to you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. So the first toy, I think every little baby and into the toddler age especially should have is a little toy piano. Okay. And these usually are like the little small pianos. It's only got like four or five little notes and really big and colorful. Those are really helpful. Let me explain why. So at this age, developmentally, little babies and toddlers, they're starting to connect sounds okay like higher pitch sounds of course they already know what they those things are but it's starting to i guess i should say like resonate with them they're starting to think oh i like this sound or that's a high pitch sound that's a low pitch sound and musically they're also developing a lot at this age as well so it's a great time because you can give them the little piano and they can take their little fingers and just press away and enjoy all the different sounds that they can make and what you will notice is at first the child will kind of start off just banging on it like hey this is cool it makes noise bam 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 whoa look at me I'm making noise so that's good (laughs) I mean not so much for moms because it makes noise but whatever we deal with it right um but then what you'll notice is as the baby gets older they will start trying to make a little tune okay and that's what you really want you want to kind of take that little toy and let them explore themselves and see what they can make based on their hearing, you know, musically. And a way that you can kind of help them with that is put Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in there. Dun, 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 dun. Let them see you do that. And then they will try to copy it. And then from there, they'll start trying to make their own little songs and their own little sounds and things like that. So I think that the the little piano is really, really, really a good one. Um, I like to use this time when I kind of, maybe they've just woken up from a nap and they're a little bit, energetic right like when they first wake up of course they're a little bit groggy but kind of once they've gotten in the swing of things maybe they just had a snack after their nap and then they're up and ready to play that's a really great time to kind of teach your child because they're fresh so you know when they're sleepy at nighttime I had a, a podcast episode a couple episodes back where I talked about the reasons why I don't even read bedtime stories anymore because I like to do the teaching and anything that I want them to kind of understand I like to do that during the day like when they're fresh so after a nap is a great time for them to play on the little piano Um, for smaller babies maybe when they wake up in the morning I'll tell you what I would do is with my little piano uh, when my babies would wake up and they were in the crib I would start off by just giving them their morning bottle they would have that and then I would just put the little toy piano in the crib with them there's nothing no parts that can harm them or anything it's It's one that nothing could fall off, nothing they could choke on. And I just let them sit there and play their little tune. I mean, sometimes they would sit there for an hour, just pecking away on it, okay? So this is something really good that you can use in place of technology. It's forcing them to use their own little mental ability and stir things up and that brain of theirs and get it going. And that's what we want to encourage. We want to encourage them to use that brain, use that body. You know what I mean? So um, I really have enjoyed that. And they're pretty reasonable. There's a lot of places that you can pick these up that that, um, you know, they're, they're super cheap and everything. And they last too. They're pretty durable. They get dirty. You just wipe them down. I have had one that I've used for both of my babies. Somehow I ended up with an extra one. I don't even remember buying it. So I have two and, you know, I have a younger, smaller toddler and one that's a bit older and they still, the toddler, the older one is starting to a little bit grow out of that. But she will sit down and play um, with her younger sister um, since there is two available now. So that's a nice thing, too. So definitely, definitely recommend the um, little baby pianos for them. Now, the next one that I recommend is uh, the jumbo building blocks. So the jumbo building blocks are great. I mean, they really, really are great. And here's the reason why. Remember, 
toddlers and babies at this stage, again, developmentally, they're trying to start putting things together, figure things out. So the blocks really get their hands going. They start using their kinesthetic skills too with the blocks. And it helps them kind of also see themselves build on something. Okay, I put one block here and then I can put another block on the top and another one on the top and another one on the top. Again, it just kind of makes them start, gets them to use their own brain power and their building ability. So what I do with these is I would kind of get everything out of the room. And what I'll do is I'll put the jumbo building blocks in the middle and I'll start off by building one little thing, like one little tower. Oh, look what we made. And then what happens? The baby comes right behind you and they want to start doing it too. So with the toys, let the baby see how you use the toys and then they will try to copy what you're doing. And then on top of that, they will try to come up with their own thing. So again, I'll just start, build like a little tower. And then I just kind of watch them and encourage them say, oh, what could you make? Look at that blue block. Look at that pink block. This also helps them learn their colors, especially if you get the ones that are all the different assorted colors, usually they are. And they have the ones that are like more the boy colors. They have some that are more the girl colors. And they're great. I also like the big blocks because unlike the little small Legos, these are easier to keep track of because Legos, as you know, you don't really want to have those for a baby because they're super small. They could choke on some of the pieces, but, um, you know, those also get lost versus these big blocks. They're super easy to find. If they get dirty, they're easier to wash. You can just like throw them in the sink or the bathtub. I've even put them in with them during bath time, the blocks, maybe sitting here taking their bath and they're still trying to do their little blocks and build it. So there's lots of ways that you can use blocks, you know, from building things um, to bath time to sometimes another thing I would do with the blocks is let's say they finish their snack and I just wanted to like quickly clean up the kitchen or something, I would wipe up their high chair and then put a couple blocks on the high chair and they could just sit there in the high chair and try to play with some of the blocks. So that's also something that is really good. Um, it keeps them engaged. And again, now that they're in the high chair, they got those blocks right in front of their face. So then they look at them even closer. It's so funny to see their little faces because they're like squinting their eyes and putting it together like, like, oh, and then they look at it like, oh, it's so cool. So it's super fun and cute to watch them play with the blocks. So yeah, definitely make sure you try to use them in a lot of different ways. The more you use them and introduce them to them, the more they will want to use them um, and, and try to really build as much as they can build with them. Um, the last thing I would say that you could also do with the blocks is it's a great way to encourage them to clean up. So the blocks, right, it's a lot of them and they usually come in like a little box block case like they come with their own little bag. So I've kept that bag over the years and I will just um, have it unzipped and then I'll say clean up time. This is great for like a baby or a toddler that's just starting to walk because that's a really a great time to start teaching them how to clean up. And you could just say, let's clean up the blocks. And so then they get the concept of picking something up and carrying it and putting it into the place where it belongs. That's a really good way to get a toddler into clean up time because if you're trying to get them to clean up with, you know, just clean up, you know, it's sometimes it's overwhelming. They don't know where stuff goes and they don't know what stuff is. And they're like, hey, what are you asking me to do right now? But the blocks, they're so in tune with them and they're so like made for them. They seem to just get it. So, you know, it's a great way to start them off you know, just, hey, let's clean up your blocks. And if that's all they can do from like, you know, one year old to like maybe 15 months, maybe they could just pick up their blocks. That's okay. They're getting the concept. And then you've got something that you can build on and teach them later more things that they can clean up. So again, highly, highly recommend the jumbo building blocks. Okay. So the next thing that I definitely encourage, um, old school toys that babies and toddlers should have is play food, okay? 
those little old school play foods and they do not have to be the expensive ones i'm talking about like you ever see the ones at like the dollar store where it's like a random fake banana and fake peas and fake cookie like whatever those are awesome because Food is something that babies and toddlers get. They see you preparing food. They know food tastes yummy to the stomach. They know what food is, okay? So it's a great way to get their imagination going because they can still see that that's not real food, but they can see that it's a pretend thing. They really do get it. And so what you can do is play mealtime with them. This is also a great way to get them to eat their foods. Like I had um, some play peas and I go, oh, Num, 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 num. eat the peas eat the peas and then the next time i cook peas <gasps> peas they recognize those peas even though those are the real peas right and they picked them up and ate them just like that okay so that's really another way that you can encourage them to eat is with the play food now the other thing that i like to do with the play food is just use it to encourage them to use their imagination okay so you know if you have the fake kitchen to go along with it great i have like the little small one which i like because it doesn't take up a lot of space and it's not heavy and i can move it around like from room to room so that's super helpful and some people have like the big elaborate kitchens if you got space for that great and you want to go ahead and go full bore that's something great to do um um, but again, encouraging them to use their imagination. So you can walk into like your little kitchen with them. You know, you take your little plate and you put their fake food on there and you pretend you're eating with them. Pretend you're eating with them. They love it. They think it's hilarious because they know it's not real food, but it's like funny to pretend. And then all of a sudden you'll see them like my one toddler, she'll pick up her little cup and ah, I don't want, oh, excuse me, you know what I mean? So it's like, oh, she knows that drinking is refreshing, you know? So it's just a great way to get them to use their imagination. And another kind of game you can play with them with the food is let's play cooking. So I'll pretend that I'm cooking with the fake food. I'll go, ooh, I'm making breakfast. Yummy, we're going to have breakfast. And then I'll go, your turn. You make breakfast for mommy. And they'll pick up the little plate and they'll start cooking. And here you go. You know, they say it in their little toddler voice, here you go. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Delicious. It tastes so good. Oh, my goodness. They just fall out in the floor. It's like so hilarious to them. Okay. So definitely. And with the fake food, you could start that super early. I mean, that one, I want to say with the fake food, I probably started with both of them, like maybe around four or five months. Basically, when they, you could tell that they're really laughing at stuff, that's a good time to start introducing the fake food. And of course, the big fake food, um, the ones that are like plastic through and through, not anything with any small pieces or anything, because of course, you don't want them to choke. But the big, um, like a fake banana or a fake chicken leg, oh my goodness, we had a fake chicken leg. They love the fake chicken leg because they understand chicken, right? <laughs> and so they just love it. And matter of fact, sometimes they fight over that chicken leg. So definitely, definitely the fake food adds a lot of fun and a lot of joy to playtime. Okay. So let's get into the next one, which is a fake stethoscope or actually a real stethoscope. Okay. So the reason you want to get a stethoscope is because again, it encourages them to use their imagination. They're playing doctor. Okay. And so by this point, you know, especially if they like one, by the time they're one, they kind of get this concept because they've been to the doctor before and they seen them put the little stethoscope on their chest and they're looking at it. What are you doing? <laughs> Isn't that the cutest thing ever? Uh, and I just play doctor with them. And this works in a couple of good ways. Number one, it will get them like not as afraid of going to the doctor because they've seen that instrument before at home and they know that it doesn't hurt. Okay. So this is one that I wished with my first baby, I was I knew about and introduced it a little bit earlier because she is more of a cautious baby. So whenever she went to the doctor, she was like, uh -uh, what are you trying to do in here? Don't touch me with that. She's a very high alert, you know? Um, and so after I saw how she was and I got the play stethoscope, it was like, 
then when she would go to the doctor, it was no big deal. You know what I mean? Because again, she had seen it and experienced it. So then, you know, with the second baby, I implemented that right away. And she just go in the doctor like, okay, we playing, it's playtime, you know, until she got a shot. And then, but um, so yeah, I definitely, definitely think the stethoscope is a good idea. The stethoscope uh, toy is also a good idea because that is one that they could grow with. I mean, they can play with that as long as they are, you know, into imaginative playing, you know what I mean? And that could go up even to age 10, you know, and beyond that for, for some kids. So that is one that they could start off with, you know, really little and progress with it. So you're playing like doctor in the baby way, like when they're younger. And then when they get a little bit older, you know, maybe you're playing doctor, but you're talking about actual diseases and, you know, you're actually going through some of the emotions of breathing in and breathing out and asking questions. How does your heart feel and things like that? So you can get more interactive with the game of playing doctor and the stethoscope will help them to be comfortable at the doctor um, when they actually do go and visit. And it also helps them to recall things that they've seen and heard from these different situations. So um, the other day I was just playing um, doctor with uh, my older toddler. And then all of a sudden uh, we were playing and she goes, okay, so it looks like you have a broken bone. And so what we need to do is we need to do an x-ray. But then we need to do a CAT scan because you may have a lot of damage inside. And I went, oh, how do you know about a CAT scan? It shows more damage inside. So again, it showed me like, okay, she's listening into my conversation. She's listening. You know, there's been times and times past where she tagged along with me to a couple of my doctor's visits. So she understood that and heard it, you know. So again, it, it gives you insight into your child information that they are retaining and then they get to repeat it and use it in a setting. So again, it's just making their mind work. It's getting them to think, it's getting them to use their imagination and it's getting them to engage with you instead of the, you know, um, iPads and the TV and things like that. And I'm not ever going to like completely oh, never TV, never iPad. Like you can use those things in moderation. And frankly, sometimes when you want some alone time, maybe you want to cuddle with daddy or something or whatever, and you can throw on a TV for a little bit and chill out or whatever, fine. Like I'm all about it, you know? But I really do think the old school toys are much more important because they encourage them to use their mind. And I think that if we're not careful today with how we use technology and how much we allow our kids to use technology, some of those like talking skills and reasoning skills are going to kind of get lost in future generations if there's a, a dependency on technology from an early age and they're never introduced to just traditional play. So I hope you guys are taking away from this episode that the whole main point of having four old school toys for every child is to really just to encourage your child to think and encourage you to interact with your child. So I hope you guys have found this um, episode to be informative. I hope it's giving you some things to think about. Today, we only covered four. There's lots of toys that are just basic, old school, affordable toys that I really want to talk about more that I will definitely talk about in the future. So stay tuned. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening. Work it, Mommy. Have a great day. And we'll see you in the next episode.